we have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order. Society has preconceived notions about many things. Most are influenced by what we're exposed to in the mass media and social environments on a day-to-day -day basis. We're conditioned. We wake, work, eat, play, sleep over and over again. Once, if we're lucky, twice a year, we wake and play for a week and then it's back to the grind. Most of us do not take the time to pull back and take a realistic look at things. We're all too busy working and trying to have a good time to notice. Popular culture and mass media manipulation have been proven to effectively influence public opinion. The powers behind this scheme and the global empire of the New World Order consist of various controlling components. Political, military, economic, scientific, cultural, and religious. These entities are the outer core of our understanding. The inner core is cloaked, concealing the secret societies working for the goal of a one world government, consisting of three pillars of power, financial, military, and religious power of the world, encompassing the political, scientific, and all cultural aspects of our society today. This explains how, for over 100 years, the U.S. Constitution has been more and more defiled and decimated. Each successive U.S. President has moved America further away from freedom, liberty, and the founding principles of our Republic, each duping the people to accept traitorous actions as necessary and acceptable, each working to install the core beliefs and principles that can best be defined as communism or illuminism the doctrine of the Illuminati or the Illumined Ones, all are the same. Behind the power of this global empire, operating behind the scenes, are the city-states of the Vatican, the District of Columbia, and the City of London. Together, these city-states form one interlocking invisible empire. These three city-states are corporations who collectively control the world, militarily through the District of Columbia, economically through the City of London Corporation, and spiritually through the Vatican. Whether real or promulgated, world events are mirroring biblical prophecy. These city-states are knowingly or unknowingly fulfilling biblical prophecy to the letter using mankind's intellect and technology. As Dylan sang, times they are changing. It seems the seven deadly sins, lust, gluttony, greed, sloth, wrath, envy, pride, are now acceptable behavior and wantonly practiced openly. Hey, if it feels good, do it. No wonder the family unit has been so decimated in the century of the self. The state is God, or wants to be. More accurately, the elite puppet masters behind the scenes want the state to be God. In addition, there's been an undeniable decline in morality in the last four decades. The slide is noticeable. This use of social control is most noticeable in pop culture, music, movies, videos, TV. We go from Pat Boone to Miley Cyrus. From its inception, America has had a significant role in the plans of the New World Order. The three red communist stars on the flag of the District of Columbia refer to the three city-states, one for each city in the empire. These entities pay no taxes, are under no national authority, and have their own independent flag their own separate laws, their own separate police force, and are totally independent entities from the rest of the world. These three city-states each play a crucial role in the governmental system. They are sovereign, corporate entities that are not connected to the nations they appear to be a part of. The City of London is not technically part of Greater London or England, just as the Vatican City is not part of Rome or Italy, and Washington, D.C. is not part of the United States, although D.C. does have controlling power over America and its political system. Washington, D.C. was established as a city-state in 1871 with the passage of the Acts of 1871 and then 1874, which created the city-state of Washington, D.C., and a separate corporation known as the United States and a corporate government for the District of Columbia. This treasonous act 
allows the District of Columbia to operate as a corporation outside the original Constitution of the United States and against the best interests of the American people. This is why Obama and all of his predecessors since 1871 have incrementally sliced and diced the Constitution. Remember, corporations are run by presidents, CEOs. Most people perceive that the United States president is the leader of the free world. In truth, the president, elected by the unsuspecting sheeple, is appointed by the United States in capital letters as president of the corporation. The president is nothing more than a figurehead, a puppet for the global elite central bankers. Cleopatra's needles, named for the famous Egyptian queen, are two ancient obelisks presented by the Khedive of Egypt to Great Britain and the United States. The British monument is located on the Thames Embankment in London. The U.S. one is in New York City Central Park. They were originally built in 1500 B.C. in the city of Heliopolis by King Thutmos III. The three city-states of Washington, D.C., the city of London, and the Vatican all have their own obelisks, which are symbolic representations of the Egyptian sun god Ra, as well as the ancient symbol of male energy and generation in Freemasonry. The obelisk that is currently towering over St. Peter's Square in the Vatican was originally made in Egypt and transported to Rome in the year 37 AD by Caligula, who placed it in the center of the Circus of Nero. In 1586, Pope Sixtus V moved the obelisk to where it stands today, a place where innumerable Christians, including St. Peter, were put to death. Why would a pope, who knows the evils and debaucheries of Emperor Caligula's sadistic and murderous reign, place a phallic monument to Ra, the Egyptian sun god, in St. Peter's Square, where Christian martyrs and St. Peter were put to death? Another good question to ask is, why would the St. Peter's obelisk be so precisely positioned that it is also a sundial? Could they all be sacrifices to Ra, the sun god, also known as Lucifer, son of the morning star? Is there a connection to these things? Let's see. Cleopatra's Needle is located on the banks of the River Thames in London and was transported and erected under the reign of Queen Victoria in an area of land where the Knights Templar had their own docks. The obelisk originally stood in the Egyptian city of Heliopolis, the city of the sun, around 1450 B.C. Presented to the city in 1819, Cleopatra's Needle remained in Alexandria until January 1878. In 12 BC, when Egypt was part of the Roman Empire, the London and New York obelisks were moved to the city of Alexandria and placed in the Caesarium. Two bronze replicas of Egyptian sphinxes sit on either side of London's Cleopatra's Needle and bear the inscription of the good god, Thumosius III, given life written in hieroglyphics. Today, the city-state of London is the world's financial power center and the wealthiest square mile on the planet, housing the Rothschild-controlled Bank of England, Lloyds of London, the London Stock Exchange, all British banks, uh, all branch offices of 384 foreign banks, 70 U.S. banks, Fleet Street newspaper and publishing monopolies, headquarters for worldwide Freemasonry, and the headquarters for the worldwide money cartel known as the Crown. The Crown is not part of London or England or the British Commonwealth. U.S. President Barack Obama, the same as others before him, operates as the vassal king, taking orders from the City of London through Chatham House, also known as the Royal Institute of International Affairs. The Vatican has giant holdings in oil and weapon corporations like Shell, British Petroleum, and General Electric. Billions of Vatican gold bullion is housed within the Rothschild-controlled Bank of England and USA's Federal Reserve Bank. The Catholic Church is the biggest financial power, wealth accumulator, and property owner in existence, possessing more material wealth than any bank, corporation, giant trust, or government anywhere on the globe. The Pope is the visible ruler of this colossal global wealth. Like the Vatican obelisk, the Washington Monument is surrounded by a circle denoting the female, the poor fellow soldiers of Christ, and the Temple of Solomon, who were later known as the Knights Templar, were the first to issue paper money for public use in Europe, establishing the fiat banking system we know today. By gaining close ties 
with the elite of England, Austria, France, and Italy, the House of Rothschild have established a worldwide banking and finance operation. They are major players in the social, political, and economic life of the world. The Rothschild's dynasty is a hidden force in most political events of the last two centuries. They are also at the top of the Illuminati pyramid, one of the 13 Luciferian bloodline families. Dorothy de Rothschild gave Israel their Supreme Court building under three conditions. The Rothschilds were to choose the plot of land, they would use their own architect, and no one would know, would ever know, the price of its construction. The Israeli Supreme Court building is a temple of the mystery religion, adorned with Masonic and Illuminati motifs. It was built by the elite for the elite. The structure is capped with a pyramid, complete with all-seeing eye and an obelisk to the left. A journey through the Supreme Court is a symbolic course of illumination. The goal is to reach the top of the pyramid, which is on the roof. On the upper floors, there is a library, which is divided in three levels, symbolically representing the top three degrees of Freemasonry. The esoteric meaning of this building is not recognized by the public, but is unmistakable to the initiates who possess the world's real power. The library contains legal, judicial, philosophical, and spiritual works with the wealth of esoteric knowledge. The highest level of the library is the base of the pyramid, where Freemasonry symbolically ends and the hidden order of the Illuminati begins. The Israeli Supreme Court House it's not only a courthouse, but a it is a temple of the mystery. The facade and structure Bush are laden with images of pagan rituals interlaced with an esoteric, Kabbalistic interpretation of the scriptures. Dorothy de Rothschild's husband, James A. de Rothschild, donated the Israeli parliament building known as the Knesset. In England, the Templars established their headquarters at a London temple, which still exists today and is called the Temple Bar, located in the city of London, between Fleet Street and Victoria Embankment. The Crown, to be exact, is the Knights Templar Church, also known as the Crown Temple. All bar associations are directly linked to the International Bar Association and the Inns of Court at Crown Temple in the City of London. Anytime you hear a lawyer or someone refer to the Bar Association, they are talking about a British Masonic system that has nothing to do with the country's sovereignty or constitutional rights. This is why when you go to court in the U.S., you see the U.S. flag with a gold fringe denoting admiralty or international law. The entire global financial and legal system is controlled from the city of London by the Crown. It's not Queen Elizabeth. It's the Illuminati bankers, the Rothschilds. The square mile making up the center of Greater London is the global seat of power. The Temple Bar consists of what are called Inns of Court. There are four Inns of Court, the Inner Temple, the Middle Temple, Lincoln's Inn, and Gray's Inn. Most people believe the U.S. declared independence from Britain, but this is not exactly true. Of the signatories of the Declaration of Independence, at least five of them were Temple Bar attorneys, all of whom had sworn allegiance to the Crown. Alexander Hamilton was one of the Middle Crown agents during the formation of the U.S. and was assigned to set up the American banking system on orders from the Crown to control the United States. In fact, a state is a legal entity of the Crown. Signed treaties and charters between Britain and the United States reveal that King James I signed the First Charter of Virginia in 1606, granting America's British forefathers a license to settle and colonize America and guaranteed future kings and queens of England to have sovereignty, authority, over the citizens and colonized land in America. After the Revolutionary War, the Treaty of 1783 identifies the King of England as the Prince of the United States. True, King George III gave up most of his claims over the American colonies, but he kept his right to continue receiving payment for his business venture of colonizing America. They certainly do not teach this in school, but it's nonetheless true. The United States government, the same as all governments, a total of 193 nations in the world, are up to their eyeballs in the New World Order system.